Hello everyone, this is the Pizza Delivery Drone Group. Uh, we have three members in our group, myself, Ashikur Rahman, and the other two members are Ajay Naidu and Edgardo Flores. Uh, we are making the presentation online today. So uh, a model is a description of the system behavior that is constructed to help us understand and predict its operational behavior. So from the diagram, you can see that uh, at first uh, there we, we can generate a mental model. Uh, so that is how we are going to arrange the testing uh, devices, what will be their integration and how we are going to configure them. And from, from this mental model, we can create uh, an explicit model uh, with including the uh, devices for the testing, such as an schematic and uh, we can also look for the acceptance of the test and if in different uh, test scenario what we what will be the result uh, according to the result we can create the chart and also at, at which uh, conditions the test will be performed so all those decisions we can make and then uh, we can execute the test and for recording the test results uh, we can generate the uh, tables or metrics uh, from where we can uh, take the decision that at which condition what type of uh, result we are uh, getting from the test so uh, the model is uh, usually manually uh, manually authored from information specifications or uh, the requirements of the project uh, creating a formal model from the requirements already uh, results in feedback about the initial specifications uh, because the process of creation requires modelers to ask themselves question that lead to detection of missing information or to seeking more clarity uh, from the test model we can identify that uh, what are the total test sequences and which order they are going to be performed uh, the role of the test sequences is to control the system under test uh, driving it into uh, different types of conditions under which it can be tested for uh, conformance with the model uh, which significantly makes the process easier and we can perform the test more precisely so there are uh, many benefits of the model based testing uh, the one of the uh, major benefit of the model based testing is the reduced testing time and cost uh, model based testing practices will lead to less time and effort spent on testing in case of uh, time needed to write and maintain the model uh, as well as the time spent on directing the test generation is less than the cost of manually designing and maintaining a test suite uh, it might also save time during the failure analysis stage uh, after test execution another uh, big advantage of the model based testing is the improved test quality uh, while performing manual testing, the quality of tests is highly dependent on the test engineer and the test design process is usually not reproducible. Model-based testing, however, uses an automated test generator based on algorithms and uh, heuristics to choose the test cases from the model, which makes the design process systematic and repeatable. Since the input data and the test oracles are generated from the model, the cost of generating more executable test scripts is just the computing time required to generate them. Model coverage is another benefit of the model-based testing. The test progress and the generated test cases can be evaluated using uh, coverage criterion uh, defined before the test generation. Coverage can also be expressed for a model Therefore, uh, model coverage is another heuristic that provides insight into the thoroughness and the effectiveness of the testing effort, especially when the testing does not reveal failures. Uh, coverage typically deals with the control flow through the model. Traceability is another feature of the uh, model-based testing, which is uh, very helpful. Uh, that is the traceability is the ability to relate each test case to the model uh, to the test selection criteria and even to the informal uh, system requirements traceability helps to explain the test case as well as gives the justification for why uh, it was generated moreover it can be used to optimize test execution as the model evolves uh, since it enables uh, the possibility to execute just the subset of the test that are affected by the model modifications 
From an abstract view, traceability is a relation between the elements of the model and the test cases. So these are the uh, major advantages that we can have from the uh, model-based testing. So also there are some uh, drawbacks associated with the uh, model-based testing. Uh, the main challenge in model checking is dealing with the state space exploration problem which is common in real life application. This problem occurs in systems with many interacting components with data structures assuming many different values. Uh, almost all other model based tasks such as model maintenance, checking, uh, reviewing, uh, non-random test generation and achieving coverage criteria uh, those are affected in this scenario. Uh, another problem is the useless matrix. Uh, in the manual test design process, often a number of test cases designed are measures of how the test is progressing. Such measures are not useful when applying model-based testing. Since the approach can generate huge numbers of test cases, measures of test progress should instead move towards other measurements. So, uh, the another problem is the inappropriate use of the model based testing uh, we we see that happening uh, many times uh, in generalistic testing sometimes it happens that some parts of the uh, testing process may be difficult to model and these parts could be uh, tested manually it's not necessary that all areas of the uh, testing process could be suitable for the use of the model based testing the risk is that it takes some experience of model based testing usage to know which aspects of the testing process should be modeled and which should be tested manually or by the by using the other tools or techniques another problem is uh, that some different skills are required compared to the manual test design uh, for the model based testing the model designers must be able to abstract and design the models in addition to being experts in the application area uh, this requires training cost and an initial learning curve when starting to use the model based testing also the uh, model based testing however uh, sometimes generates test sequence that might might be more complex and uh, less in intuitive uh, than manually designed test sequences uh, thus it might be more difficult and time consuming to find the cause of the failed test so based on the concept developed on the uh, model based testing from the uh, IVVT book I will try to uh, explain the test procedure of the battery of our project so now I will discuss more about the battery testing procedure. For the battery testing, we need the power budget analysis, uh, which is very important to uh, measure the performance of the battery over the time. So this gives us an idea how much power we need to operate individual subsystems. So for the each components of the drone, uh, for example, the motherboard, processor, transceiver, antenna, motor, uh, this for these devices how much will be the voltage and current consumption and depending on the voltage and current consumption we can estimate how much power is required and also the what is the energy consumption rate over time and we will also monitor the performance of the battery uh, for this type of for these devices based on the capacity of the battery we will see how the uh, performance is uh, getting deteriorated over time we will see what should be the exact power level of the battery uh, to ensure that all the components can run together so this is a very important concept we have come to know from our VVT study book which is the model based testing so this is the model of our battery testing system so basically this is uh, this is an arrangement of uh, connection among different devices by which we can measure the performance of the battery we have the power supply the power signal connector uh, the battery voltage monitor and all the devices that will be connected with the battery and also the battery itself uh, for testing the performance so initially our plan is uh, all of the devices will be connected with the battery at the same time and we will see how the uh, voltage and current level of the battery changes 
when all the devices are connected together so we will be able to see the discharge rate of the battery uh, with regard to the charging rate uh, we will repeat the same process by eliminating the devices one by one so that we can observe how the performance of the battery is changing for each individual devices so we are going to see a graph something like that where we have uh, three stages at first at the first stage when uh, the battery performance is really good when the battery level is high uh, we will see all the when all the devices are together connected how's the voltage and current level and when the battery level goes down at the stage two uh, what is happening to the voltage level and current level and after six hours how's the performance of the battery uh, so we will repeat the process for each individual de devices and also uh, eliminating devices one by one so that we can we can take the decision that which devices can be turned on at a time and when we are running out of the battery which devices we should turn off uh, so that we can ensure that uh, we have a successful operation of the drone all the time with the charge available in the battery the main risk in the software subsystem are data hacking and the uh, hardware controller hacking and the software bugs which appear and uh, result in failure of the system and sometimes the system may go into uh, the unauthorized uh, people the data hacking and uh, hardware control hacking has become very common because when one door closes the hackers are finding a new door or a new way to hack the systems software bug is an error uh, failure or fault in a computer program that causes uh, to produce an incorrect result or uh, unusual uh, behavior of the uh, software system next slide for our project uh, we are using the sel4 operating system which is anti -hack hackable and using uh, AES 256 bit storage encryption to secure uh, the system from hacking. The software testing will be done at subsystem level and the integration phase of the software subsystem. Next slide. We are using two uh, methods of testing in uh, software testing, uh, subsystem testing. Uh, those are functional and non functional testings. In functional testing, uh, the unit testing is a level of software testing where uh, individual components of the software are tested. This will validate each unit of the software. After the passing of unit testing, uh, here comes the integration testing. It's a software development process which makes the units combined and uh, tested in multiple ways. Basically, it's a com combination of uh, integration of uh, the individual components which are uh, tested in the unit testing level and uh, and those are combined to test in multiple ways coming to the system uh, testing it's done after the integrated testing is passed and make sure the software system is work, working according to according to the requirements and uh, basically it's a verification uh, of the software system the next step would be acceptance testing where the software is tested for the validation coming to the non-functional testing uh, the performance testing is done to uh, test the capability of uh, software in all extreme conditions and uh, later on it released to uh, users for the usability testing and uh, it is released to uh, it is it is basically the releasing of a software to the users and detect the defects with set of uh, software teams uh, supervision it's basically like a peer review or uh, open source testing and later on uh, we are going to compatibility testing and which is uh, which is very important phase because of the hardware and software integration is needed and software is a controller for the function of whole drone uh, and it's needed uh, as per the requirements thank you
Hello guys, my name is Edgardo Flores and I'm going to be talking to you about black box and white box testing. So both white box and black box testing are necessary for, the su for successful software delivery. In many cases, black box testing is done by dedicated testers, while white box testing is done by developers. This is because as you can see in the diagram, black box testing um, the tester doesn't need to know what is inside the program so the, the tester provides some input and the program provides some output in the white box testing case the tester does know uh, what's inside the program and these are two different types of performing tests In this slide, I'm going to be talking to you about the pros and cons of black box testing. So some of the pros are that it's efficient for large segments of code, meaning you don't have to go line by line to check to revise the code. Another pro is that uh, access for the code is not required. So anybody can use it. It, it could be a uh, dedicated testers or it can be uh, the end user. Another pro is that uh, it's separation between the user and the developer. So it means you get different perspectives from this different sides of the, of the cycle. Some of the cons of this, of this type of testing is that it's limited coverage since you will only see a fraction of, of uh, scenarios performed. You can only test certain scenarios, um, which which is the same thing as inefficient testing due to lack of knowledge of the software or of the application. There are different types of methods of black box testing. Three, um, the most common ones are graph-based testing methods, error guessing and boundary value analysis. The ones that we could apply to our to our project are error guessing and boundary value analysis. Error guessing can be something that has a history of of failing so you test it because it has a tendency to fail and that's where you can have where you can find um, errors hidden. Uh, another is boundary value analysis. If we apply it to our project, we could say we can test uh, the drone to uh, if the drone if the drone has a range from uh, up to 50 miles, we can test it to 51. Or if it has a battery, if the battery can last up to three hours. We could test it to like three hours and a, and a half or three hours and 15 minutes. So you can test the max and minimum of the boundary. That's what, that's what the boundary value analysis means. Some of the pros of white box testing is that it's efficient at finding errors and problems. Another is that the developer is the one conducting this test which has more knowledge of the program itself. So it allows the, the programmer to find hidden errors that he might have not noticed before. Some of the, the cons is that it's, time, it's very time consuming since it, it has to go line by line of code. Uh, another con is it requires access for, of the code. And it requires a high level of uh, knowledge of the software as well. In this slide, I'm going to be talking to you about the methods of white box testing. The three main white box testing techniques are statement coverage, branch coverage, and path coverage. Statement coverage basically goes line by line of code and checks all the lines in the program. Branch cover, when branch coverage, you can think about it as if it was a, th a tree with two branches. 
it would go, uh, for example, in an if statement, if you have a yes and a no, it would go to the yes, verify that that, that, that uh, code works properly, and it would also go towards the no and verify that that code works properly. In the branch coverage, the test uh, covers all paths of the program. To conclude, we're going to be comparing these two methods of testing. So as we know, black box, black box testing is known for a functional testing, functionality testing, in which the tester does not know any of the internal structure or design and white box testing is known as clear box testing in which the tester does know internal structure of the program as well as the design and implementation so for black box testing the black box testing is usually done by independent software test testers people that are dedicated to testing software um, programming knowledge is not required and neither is implementation knowledge. For this you do have to, for this type of test you do have to know the requirement specifications. For white box testing it is usually um, done by software developers that are familiar with the, with the code. Program knowledge is required as well as implementation knowledge. And in order to do this type of test, the tester needs to know the design in detail. These two test types of testing are, are critical for su successful software completion.